Imagine two blocks connected via springs. Let's say the blocks are of mass m1 and m2, and let's say the springs have stiffnesses k1 and k2. Let's see what happens when block 1 has moved a distance x1 from equilibrium, and block 2 has moved a distance x2 from its equilibrium. Well, the free body diagram of block 1 will look like this. There will be a force k1 x1 to the left, and a force to the right due to block 2 moving away, which will be k2 x2. And there will be another force on the left due to block 1 moving towards block 2, which will be k2 x1. Now the forces on block 2 will be equal and opposite, so we will get this. Now let's generate some equations by applying f equals ma. For block 1 we have minus k1 x1 minus k2 x1 plus k2 x2 is equal to m1 a1, which can be written like this. For block 2, we have k2 x1 minus k2 x2 is equal to m2 a2, which can be rewritten to form this. Now we're ready to involve matrices. These two equations can be written in matrix form as this. This matrix is known as the mass matrix M, and this matrix is known as the stiffness matrix K. In order to solve this ODE, we need to guess a solution. Now there are many choices we can make, but an easy one is x1 is equal to a1 cos omega t minus phi, and x2 is equal to a2 cosine omega t minus phi. Now by differentiating both of these things twice, we get x1 double dot is equal to minus omega squared a1 cosine omega t minus phi, and x2 double dot is equal to minus omega squared a2 cosine omega t minus phi. Substituting these values into our matrix equation and dividing by the cosine term, we get this. Now this is a useful expression because now we can group these two matrices together like this. Now in order to solve for non-trivial solutions, the determinant of this matrix must be equal to zero. And in case you can't remember what a determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is, it's AD minus BC. With this equation, you can solve for the positive values of omega, and these solutions of omega are called the natural frequencies of the system. Let's say that these values are omega 1 and omega 2, and I'll talk about them shortly. But first, let's consider the first row of this expression just here. Minus omega squared m1 plus k1 plus k2 times by a1 minus k2a2 is equal to 0. From this expression, we can solve for a1 divided by a2, the ratio of amplitudes to be equal to k2 divided by minus omega squared m1 plus k1 plus k2. Now, when omega is equal to omega 1, we will get a ratio that I'll superscript with a 1 that equals this. Also, if we solve for this ratio when omega is equal to omega 2, we will get this. These two amplitude ratios corresponding to each natural frequency are known as mode shapes, or sometimes referred to as natural modes. Now you might be asking yourself, what do natural frequencies and their corresponding mode shapes even mean? Well, if you were to go through the formal derivation, you can prove that the general equation of motion of the blocks are x1, x2 is equal to the first modal vector times by cosine omega 1t minus phi 1, plus the second modal vector times cosine omega 2 minus phi 2. Notice that these are the natural frequencies and these are the mode shapes that we found earlier. And what's so amazing about this result is that it shows that the motion of each of these blocks is a precise summation of two separate cosine waves. And don't worry about the terms a, b, phi 1, and phi 2, they're just constants to be determined from the initial conditions. Now before we end this video, I just want to show you this quick little simulation I made just here. Notice what I'm doing is I'm showing the motion of each of these blocks, and it looks kind of crazy, right? Yet we know that the motion of each of these blocks can be described as the sum of two cosine waves just here. 
Now my question for you at the very end of all this is to ask, well, what changes would be made if we had just a third block attached to the end just here? Well, all that would mean, it turns out, is that we would have yet another natural frequency, and that would mean we have another corresponding mode shape, which means that we have another term on the end just here. That's all it means. Anyway, guys, that's a brief summary to multiple degrees of freedom systems. I hope that made sense. I hope you learned something. Cheers.